let's use this. And I'm thinking maybe the pattern is a little bit too large. I've shown you that there are shortcuts in this shader product, but not every shader has those. And you might find that, hey, I've bought a, a product that has shaders like this with square tiles, with square texture tiles applied, and I'd like to adjust the size of that. And these things, these user-facing dials are not there. Uh, you can go into the Surfaces tab on the Editor tab, find the material zone that you're after, namely this one here, and then drill down and find something down here, namely geometry. So this list works just like regular materials. If you go to the top here, then you see everything, but it's a long list. So to make it a little bit more palatable, we can go and drill down into several aspects of the shader. So in my case, I need the geometry section and once again this is a long list so you can open up geometry and then go for even smaller refinements of what's in there and one of them is the cutout opacity this is something that lets you make an object kind of transparent we'll talk about that in a second uh, but the other one is the tiling here so tiling that's essentially if your object has a texture map like a character you want that to be set to one basically uh, horizontal and vertical needs to be set to one so that one face of the UV goes onto that one face of 3D object that they kind of match. You want for that to happen. But with tileable textures like these types of things that are made of little squares that are loopable, you could go with one and one like this. That's now the, the original size of the texture, but you can also go and make those smaller or larger. So if I make my tiles more, then the actual tile will be shrunk down and presented multiple times. So it's not like if I, if I shrink this down to two, then, um, and it needs to be happening on both vertical as well as horizontal, then we technically see two tiles here. So this is one tile and this is the other tile and this is another tile, there's another tile. So there's not nothing next to them, there's, they're now being tiled. And the more I do this, the more of the textures are being tiled. So uh, happens both horizontal and vertical. You can make it really small, you can make it really large. You can also go under one if you do that. So that'll enlarge the texture. So the texture is now gonna be larger than a square face on my cube. If you go the other way, then it'll mirror that image. It'll, it'll mirror basically everything. So also normal maps and bump maps are also being mirrored. So whatever used to be going out is now going in. If you go into a negative space, just remember that. But this is essentially what these little uh, sliders that do. This is one, one. That's the equivalent to this. 2-2 two, two is the equivalent, if we go back, to this here. Horizontal and vertical tiles are now set to 2, and so forth. But you might be in a position where you need something, I don't know, you know, special. Maybe you maybe 5 and 5 isn't quite working for you. Maybe you want something that is 4 on the vertical and 7 on the horizontal. You know, you can do that. You can change them independently. They don't necessarily need to go uh, with one another. I mean, make a wavy pattern like this. Also, the other two things here, the horizontal offset uh, and the vertical offset, they define where that tile begins and where it ends. So it essentially just moves them over. It doesn't change the tiling size. It just moves the position in relation to the object in both ways. It does not uh, have an impact on the render times. I mean, it shouldn't. I mean, it could be when there's more normals to be calculated. Usually it doesn't. So assume it doesn't. It's just, it's the same texture that gets loaded into memory. It's just, you know, stretched up and down a little bit differently. So this is the only thing. The, the texture itself probably doesn't affect render times, but in this here, we probably have something like uh, a bump. Yes, we have both a bump and we had a normal map as well. So I can see render times being just marginally different, uh, probably measurably different. If you were to uh, increase the size and therefore create more and more bumps, that could potentially affect render times because IRA has to create just more geometry and more light bounces.